Thank you for coming. How many, uh, is this your first Seder? Yes. Yeah, raise your right hand. <laughs> now we're not having a full uh, meal. We used to have one. Bob did a great job of full meals in our sanctuary, but we're doing a demonstration. The water walkers tomorrow night are doing a full meal. You can crash their party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Brother Bob and Kelly and Jason, uh, Jason's the best Andy Jew, and they're going to lead us tonight. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a great night. Uh, Thank you. But mainly, we're, uh, we're here to understand the uh, Jewish Passover this Seder. And uh, I'm waiting for these other two to get in, and then we can start. He didn't make it last night, but he, he was excused. Uh, but it's on Friday nights from 6.30 to 8.30 where we're studying the Jewish roots to Christianity. Mm -hmm. And so we thought we'd start off with the Seder. And um, we're gonna be studying the Hebrew language, the Hebrew calendar, um, uh, why, uh, uh, why and how uh, you can uh, in the Hebrew style, you can uh, get healed from uh, childlessness. How to uh, uh, how to recognize the naming of your children, and how to uh, be blessed by following the Torah. So I'm going to ask a question, okay? From, this is my students from last night, okay? So uh, what is the uh, first five book in the Bible called? Torah. Torah. Okay. And uh, what is the not? The Old Testament. Tana. I just wrote that. Oh, it's the T.A. T.A. is Torah. Oh, okay. Prophet. N.A. is. I was even the prophets. Ketorim. Ketorim is the right. Yeah. Yeah. The Jewish Bible has the same books that we have in the Old Testament, but they're in different forms. In fact, Daniel in the Jewish Bible is not in the prophets. It's in the writings where Psalms and Proverbs which is interesting. Okay, so we're going to open up with prayer and then we're going to begin. You're going to have a good night. Amen? Amen. Lord Jesus, we come tonight. Thank you, Father in heaven, for bringing us here tonight to enjoy this uh, demonstration mm -hmm. of a Seder that you observed when you were here many times. We pray for Bob and Ellie and Jason as they lead us through this. Mm -hmm. That Lord, it will be more than a demonstration. We'll sense your presence, yes. your anointing with yes. us here through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so we bless you and help us to learn. Give us a teachable spirit about uh, our roots and where we came from as Christians. We bless you. We love you. In Jesus' name, Yeshua. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay, so we may use his name. So just say Yeshua. 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 It means Jesus. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Pastor Ken. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Tonight is Shabbat. So we say Shabbat Shalom. So what I'd like to do before we really begin every, anything is to go over all this strange stuff that's sitting around here. Excuse me, can you turn your phones off or on silence right now? 
So I'm going to go through the elements up here. Typically, they're on a Seder plate that you saw when you came in there at the back. And what it is, and you'll learn more about these as we go through them tonight. I will be doing a, a portion at the beginning, and then Jason will pick it up there, and then we'll go through kind of the first part of the Passover Seder, Seder until we would normally eat grapes for dinner. And then I'll get up and then take it from there to the end. But what we have, and you see this on your plate, is parsley. Oh, first of all, don't drink the little cup that's on your plate. That's red wine vinegar. Uh -huh. And typically it would be salt water that we're now kind of transis transitioning to red wine vinegar. But, but you'll find out why that's there. So you have parsley in a Seder dish, a roasted egg, uh, sometimes <coughs> lettuce, a lamb shank bone, the real thing, uh, uh, horseradish root, Ellen dug that up from her garden, <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> and harosa, which uh, is a, it's a apple, honey, cinnamon, and some walnuts in here, mixture. <laughs> really good. And, up, and then also on your, your plate, you have a little bit of horseradish. These are all elements. I like to say that the Passover dinner is a big object lesson for the children in the family because that's what it's really done for children in the family. You see two candles in groups scattered around. Ellie's going to be leaving in this. A woman, it normally lights the candles. There's matches there, so uh, she will be leaving in that. And there's two, uh, that when, when you have a Shabbat dinner, you have two. And what they represent is observe, remember and observe. Remember in scripture, God is always saying, remember, 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 over and over. Teach your children, remember. And it's a very um, powerful thing, especially when we get to the cups. So you have grape juice sitting in front of you. We're going to be taking that four times tonight, four cups. So don't sitting. drink a big gulp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so up here, there's four. And uh, we'll be going through, and why this one is significant, the third one, which is called... The, the cup of redemption. Redemption. redemption and why that was why Christ pointed it out and then the third one now you see our fourth one and then you see another one up here which is the cup of Elijah yes. which is at the end so we have that separated for him if he shows up <laughs> so what we're going to do before we dive into this, the lighting of the candles will we'll be the official beginning of it. You have these little papers in front of you. How, are you familiar with the Shema? You are? Can you sing it? How many can sing the Shema? I can, I can. You can? <laughs> uh, I'll just read through Shema Yisrael, Adonai, Elohimu, Adonai, Echad. Baruch Shem Kibod Malkuto Le'alem Le'ed. So, uh, Ellie, Jason, you want to give it a try? Have a trio? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, we typically face you, so which way would be east? East. Yeah. They're all facing the right All right, all right so, let's do it. Shumai Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kelot, Malkutam Le'olam Kohen. Can we say it in English? Yep. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, blessed be his name. 
it is fitting that a woman begins the Seder and brings light to the table. As we look upon the candles, we remember the truth that Messiah is or Alam, the true light of the world. And since the Passover Seder centers on the person and work of Yeshua, as she Alam, the Lamb of God, it is fitting to begin the Seder with acknowledgement of his glory and presence. We therefore open our Seder with a blessing that recognizes him as the source of all light and truth for our lives. So read with me. Blessed are you, the Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with his commands and commanded us to be a light to the nations and created us to Yeshua, our Messiah, the light of the world. So now we're going to begin with the, the first cup, the cup of sanctification. Bob, can you tell them they can eat their fruit anytime? We don't oh, want to yes. Eat <laughs> yes, the fruit is not part of this. Yeah. It's for you to snack off. Oh. And I believe that's what the table over there is. If you've got a hunger fit, you can help yourself. This is a family thing, so anything's liable to happen. <laughs> so we begin by um, pouring the first cup. <clears throat> Just looking at this. Uh, We thank you, our Father, for the holy vine of your servant David, that you made known to us through, this, through your servant Yeshua. Yours is the glory forever. Everybody together. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. So let's take the first cup together. Just a sip. Just a sip. <laughs> Drink it all. And then it has the hand washing, which <coughs> Jason will join me. But let's read this uh, next blessing together, and then this will be our transition, and Jason will take it. See up here. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, Master of the universe, who has kept us alive and sustained us, and has brought us to the essential time. So we're kind of modifying that. So we're going to do, we used to do this, everybody, um, in the Passovers we did, but you just think we'll have it done at the lead table. And then from here, Jason. All right, great. Thank you all for coming in. So it's just a little housekeeping. So it's basically designed for everybody to find this in there. And then the black text of the is what I'll be reading, and then the yellow text that's everybody here to read or participate. And then the red text, we have a special reading thing in that tonight. So we'll start off with the carpets, which is the parsley itself. It represents spring, which is like the, the new the, the rebirth there. And we would dip that in salt water to represent the tears, but tonight we're going to do red wine vinegar because that represents the blood of Yeshua. So, um, Everybody take your carpus here, and then you dip it into the little shot glass, and then you would eat that. Mm -hmm. We have the four questions here. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> 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 It's not supposed to be. 
Yeah. It's not supposed to be a good experiment. <laughs> okay, so the four questions. When your children ask you, what do you mean by this symbol that you say? And so the four questions are basically used to explain parts of hassle, just, you know, to help people understand it. And the questions are typically asked by a child or the youngest person in the room. So, Matthew? <coughs> On all other nights, we eat bread or matzo. On this night, why do we only eat matzo? So, matzo is to observe Israel having to leave quickly um, in the night there. And so we have unleavened bread, which is, you know, a symbol of not having yeast. Yeast is a type of sin in the Bible. So it just says, yeast causes bread to rise so that we too can become puffed up in sin. So, um, then this was for all three. Don't you know that the old yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast, so that you may be removed from the new batch. For Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed. So typically, what you see in a Jewish household is everything gets cleaned top to bottom, every single square inch, and then once that's all completed, that is inspected by the head of the household. Um, if you're Orthodox or you know more conservative, you actually have a special ritual that revolves around that. And the Jews would typically abstain from leaven um, as a part of the celebrating Passover that would last a week. So the matzah, that's it's symbolic of Jesus or Yeshua. And you notice how the matzah has like, it's pierced and it has words that has holes in it. Well, that relates to Isaiah 53. So, but he was pierced he for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment of the cross of Jesus was upon him, and by his wounds he had our healing. So, next we have the three months that are not going to be to demonstrate that. You have three pieces of moss, and then you have a bag for it. And um, this, is, this is a tradition for all Jewish people. This is Messianic, this is the main line Judea. And the word of the Cohen comes from Epicone, which is Greek for that which is to come, or that which is to come, which would be Yeshua. So there's three pieces here, as you can see, and that's the of the Trinity. The middle piece is representative of Yeshua. The middle piece is what? Representative of Yeshua. Yeshua, because it is broken. So the God of the Cohen is typically hidden for the children to find. It's sort of like an Easter egg hunt there. And the Jews believe that the Afikoman was hidden to represent Mashiach, the coming of Messiah, because they don't okay. take Yeshua as being the Messiah. So at the, once uh, the Afikoman is found, it is uh, typically returned for a ransom to, uh, you know, uh, somebody would come and bring that to me and then I would give them a reward, like a ransom for that, just the same way that we, are, we ourselves are bought with a price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Praise God. What is so, that? Uh, Afi Coleman. So it would be like, oh, a, uh, it would be like back three back pieces of the house. house that you would place into a bag. Oh, okay. So, thanks for that. It's like a leaf bag. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> today, uh, <laughs> the bag is do clean. they scour the house clean first, or do they hide the bag so while you're scouring the house clean? You're oh, okay, so you would you would scour the house clean prior to Passover. Everything leading up to Passover, you would go through this whole ritual where you clean very thoroughly, and then it would be inspected. Get rid of the leaven. So, next level. So now we are going to work this out. So if you read the instructions on there, you take a piece of matzah, which should be matzah in front of the old baskets there. I'm really sorry. So you take the old And then the larger half gets passed among you, and then each person would break off a piece of <coughs> Oh, so you got 
Yeah, you have to eat it all. So just take it I just ate a whole one this morning. I know. What do we do? You pass it around and break off a few of Yes, or you can have to have this and then it's just break off a small section for yourself. Did you guys Typically, everybody would say the blessing over the bread. I'm going to say it in Hebrew, and then I'm going to walk everybody through the Hebrew, and then we're all going to say it together just so we have that experience. So it's Baruch Atarunai, Elohenu Melakalam, Homosele Kemi Paras, Amen. So just the Hebrew is the call. Baruch Atarunai, Elohenu Melakalam, Homose Lek Kemi Paras, Amen. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Have the neurosis, or you can have the whole sandwich that's up to you. 
But um, Janelle, we would take another piece of masa and then we would dip twice. And so that's again the topics where they want to have all of this in one piece. Jacob's family settled in Egypt because at that time there was a famine in Canaan. Um, and then what happened was a new pharaoh took over. He was a bad guy. And so he enslaved all the Jewish people and he made them build treasure cities and monuments to Pharaoh and Egypt. Um, during that time, Israel grew from just a small tribe to a full-on nation. They became a nation of one million people. And the Jews called out to God for deliverance and then God heard them. And that's how we got Passover. So now we have the plagues here. So in history, we know that Moses returns to Egypt from exile to demand the release of his people he was called by God. And you can read this, the first plague in Exodus 7, 14. But we know that Pharaoh was not smart. Pharaoh did not be <clears throat> And so the plagues are basically God's judgment on Egypt. They're judgment against specifically the ruler of Egypt, which would be Pharaoh, which would be the people of Egypt, and mostly the gods of Egypt. And he says, I will bring judgment on the gods of Egypt. And if you even look up the plagues, it actually corresponds to that if you really are interested in it. So now we're going to uh, commemorate the plagues here. And then this will be the second cup. So we already have a full cup there. And what we're going to do is we're going to dip our finger in, and then we're going to flick a drop onto like a napkin or onto your plate. Right thank you, Ellie. Thank you for thinking of everything here. Got extra napkins too. What? Yeah. I guess you're drinking out of it. Cup you're drinking out of it. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's the big cup. So, everybody ready for that? Very well. So, as as we uh, do that, as we let each drop out, we're going to recite the plays in order. So, starting with, everybody ready? Blood. Frogs. Lice. Beasts. Pestles. Oils. Hail, Lotus, Darkness, and finally the death of the first born. So now we come to the Passover lamb. And the blood will serve you as a sign marking the houses where you are. When I see this blood, I will pass over to you. So the blood of you so now today we know that the blood of Yeshua allows God's judgment to pass over us. That's the parallel to today. So the lamb was typically kept in, as a pet. It was kept inside of the house. It wasn't just a barnyard animal. And then killing the lamb 
made that sacrifice real. It made it personal. It wasn't just, I didn't get a lamb. You know, it was something that he raised as a pet. So once the lamb was sacrificed and it was consumed properly, <coughs> and it was eaten in haste because they knew they had to leave quickly. So Moses reminds us that it was God himself that delivered Egypt. It wasn't an angel, it wasn't an emissary, it was God himself. And so what was all we do? So the Lord brought us out of Egypt. And now it's with great care and signs and wonders. So we have a roast shank on and that reminds us of the lamb. We also have an egg and that's like the idea of a beginning. So, and, and that comes into play because Israel really became a nation on that night. Like, they, they were their own nation. God brought them out, so that was the beginning of them. And then just the verse, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. So, um, Ken, I'm going to need you to cue, get dying ready. Or, like, song. Get the song get ready. The song, the song ready. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sleep there. <laughs> You can exit out. You can exit out of this. Um, in just a second, as soon as I go through this. Now, oh, it's all right. I, I can help. You. So we're gonna sing Dying or Has anybody have, have you heard Dying or are you familiar with that song at all? I got it. So Dying is very traditional. It's every Passover. It's Messianic, it's Judaic, it's Orthodox. It's very, very common and very traditional among the Jewish people. The word dainu literally means it would be it would have been sufficient. It would have been enough. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sing dainu. If you don't know the words, you're a little uncomfortable. We can just sing the chorus on there. But I think everybody can sing the song. So we have to do it.
is really good. And I, I <coughs> from this, and he knows that I wanted to modify this before he even began. So you can always make changes to this, but they all have kind of the same elements in that we've gone through. Okay. So I would, I am going to pick up in here where we would come back from the dinner. So you have just pieced it upon brisket and chicken and all these good things. Yeah. Not no rubbing. <laughs> no one? I said no rubbing. <laughs> so typically when we would come back after the Passover, Passover meal, um, I, I'm going to begin here right underneath where it says eating the apicoven. When the hour had come, and this is what we are, we Gentile Christians are most familiar with, but remember, this is where what we celebrate as communion comes from. What we are going into right now, what we did of taking that bread, the body, but this, when the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles <clears throat> with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall never again eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken the cup and given thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Hear that word again? Remember. But what's happening here, the Jewish people, and this, is, this isn't the first time the disciples and Jesus were doing this. They've been doing this. The Jewish people have been doing this for how many years? Hundreds. Hundreds of years. Oh, thousands. But something was about to change at this moment. Hmm. Praise God. Because what does Jesus say? Do this in remembrance of me. They were doing it in remembrance, which was good, of their deliverance mm -hmm. from Egypt. Mm -hmm. But now Jesus is saying, here comes a shift in everything. Mm -hmm. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. What you are doing tonight, this castle is like a month other, because this is gonna, this is a, a total change in history when it's about to happen. It's a total change in salvation through the blood of Jesus that's going to happen. So then in the in here it goes through this matzo again, which uh, Jason already addressed. And if we go to the next page. And I'm going to begin with this, the uh, blessing after the meal, which we would typically do at this point, but it's, it's good. Blessed are you, Lord our God, Master of the universe, who nourishes the whole world in goodness, with grace, kindness, and compassion. He gives bread to all flesh, for his mercy endures forever. And through his great goodness we have never lacked nor will we lack food forever for the sake of his great name. For he is God who nourishes and sustains all and prepares food for all his creatures which he created. Blessed are you, Lord, our Lord who nourishes all. Amen. Amen. And the third cup is the cup of redemption. And this is... I don't, I don't know where I came across this, but it began years ago when we would get gathered together for Shabbat, which was a Friday evening fellowship meal. And it's very similar, but just it's, it's just the bread and the juice that we take before, uh, before the meal. Uh, and it's where we pour the cup, and this cup has always been reserved for this time in the Passover Seder. 
when Yeshua poured out his blood for us, he gave all of that. He just didn't stop. But his blood, his love, is overflowing Amen. to each one of us without measure. And Yeshua said, this is my blood shed for you. Take the remembrance of me. Let's read this together. We thank you, our Father, for the holy wine of the servant David, that you made known to us through your servant Yeshua. Yours is the glory forever. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who grace the fruit of the wine. So let's take the third cup, which is the cup of redemption, together. Is this what is presumed like as the holy grail that people keep searching for? Would this have been it? Like that third cup? That I think that's what they're referring to. But that's what it was called, the cup of redemption. Can you imagine what a stir this must have caused? This is, remember this, this is, now remember what this is. You know, it's always the cup of redemption. But his blood mm -hmm. is totally the, the cup of redemption. <coughs> Since the New Testament says explicitly that Yeshua took the bread and wine after the Passover supper, it is clear that this cup, the cup of redemption, is the one he raised when he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. For the believer in Yeshua, the third cup also symbolizes our participation in the ketubah. That's the marriage contract in the, in the Jewish wedding of the new covenant, which the groom, the katan, signified his pledge by sharing a cup of wine with his bride, the kala, Pesach, therefore was originally intended to be the model of the Christian practice of communion. I want to insert something here. If you have a Daystar network was showing the movie uh, before, before the plagues, I think it was, and it has to do with the Galilean wedding and all that took place. If you ever get to, if you ever get the opportunity, you ever see it advertised, make sure you watch it. It brings so much alive. The whole wedding, the bridegroom, the blowing of the trumpet in the middle of the night, the whole thing. The thing is that when I saw that, what came to my mind is, oh my goodness, they understood it better than we do. Because it was a Galilean wedding that Jesus was talking about or what the Bible talks about in the second column. They, they probably understood it better than what we do. So it's, it's, a, it's, a great, uh, it's a great movie to bring all of this into focus. So let's read this all together, uh, Revelation 5 as well. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Yeshua told his disciples that he would not drink the fourth cup, the cup of restoration, but promised to do so with them in the kingdom, come, yeah, coming kingdom <coughs> after the great tribulation, when all Israel would be saved. So I guess... Uh, I guess at this point, then we we pour the cup for Elijah. The cup of Elijah is poured, and a child typically 
is asked to go to and check at the door to see if anyone's there. Oh, you want to go check, Ellie? <laughs> No, maybe next year. <laughs> Look, I will send a lie to the prophet before the coming and great day of the Lord. That's from Malachi 3.23. So he made the, the fourth cup ready, and we want to give thanks to the Lord before taking the fourth cup. Let's read this together. Let Israel say, for his devotion is eternal. Let the house of Aaron say, for his devotion is eternal. Let those who fear the Lord say, for his devotion is eternal. Open for me the gates of righteousness, I will come into them. I will give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Righteous ones will come in through it. Together, I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in what I did. This cup represents our great hope that someday soon the Messiah will, is coming back to, to both take his followers to be with him and to restore the kingdom promises he made to national Israel. It is with great hope that we take this fourth cup. Let us proclaim together with one voice. Blessed are thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Let's take the fourth cup together. This cup also looks to the future, to the return of Messiah, as declared by the prophet Elijah. So with this cup, we look to the time in which our final redemption will come, and we will be truly sanctified, delivered, and redeemed. And everybody together, next year, Yeah, you're free to take all the mods that you want. <coughs> <coughs> Amen. 
Yiva Rekaka Yave Barishma Rekha Yave Yave Pena Bailika Di Kumeka Yisa Yave Pena Bailika Di Yase Baha Shalom Yahweh, he who exists, will kneel before you presenting gifts and will guard you with a hedge of protection. Yahweh, he who exists, will illuminate the wholeness of his being toward you, bringing order, and he will provide you with love, sustenance, and friendship. Yahweh, he who exists, will lift the wholeness of being and look upon you, and he will set in place all you need to be whole and complete. Amen. 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 Whole and complete. Amen. Like he said on the cross, it is finished. Let it go and run. Let it go and run. Yeah, that's all. Did you get it back? Yeah. 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 We're going to have a little snack. Uh, we're going to uh, give uh, Bob and Jason a hand. Sometimes we'll uh, have a Jason share his head back. Uh, like I say, uh, Jason tried to run away from this. And, uh, to his mother, who's been watching all of this in Wisconsin online, uh, she's happy we found a uh, congregation that uh, recognizes uh, Messianic Jews. Uh, so, uh, praise the Lord. So, uh, we have uh, one that's famous, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> I'm making a 50 year in the rice and rice casserole it's just they use with uh, crackers. Oh. Uh, and, and she won't tell you what it's all in. So, uh, let's see. so then, um, Resurrection Day, we don't use the word Easter around here because that's ISIS that got us. Uh, Resurrection Day, 8 o'clock. Can everybody's attention? Eight o'clock, we'll be at the Three Crosses for a half hour sunrise service. Eight thirty, we'll be in here uh, for a meal, a breakfast, casserole. Nine thirty, we'll be over at the baptismal pool to baptize Catherine and Tyler. Ten o'clock, we'll be ready for our work. It's going to be a full day. Good morning. Make sure you get to bed early Saturday night. And rest up. Praise the Lord. And uh, anybody else have anything? Yeah, I have a couple of things I just want to say. So first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for showing up. It's just it just really cool me and it blesses me to so see so many people here tonight that came out for so thank you all for showing up. Thank you, Matthew, for coming to the page. I'd especially like to thank Ellie for just the beautiful day before I believe mean, they get it out. Amen. And I'd like to thank everybody Bob Ken to swallow me possible. Did you find it? Thank you. Kind of might want to look under and behind stuff. Under and behind stuff. To wipe away tears and pain. And hope springs eternal. All right. Make a circle. Actually, we're going to be going around. We're going to be going around. We're going to be going around. And then we're going to move freely. So, just to try it out. Did you find it? No. It's behind or underneath something. I know. You lived in a long day.